You're too small and too weak to be a professional footballer. That's what clubs told Park Ji Sung when he was growing up in Suwon, South Korea. So you know what he did? He drank dog juice and deer blood and ate antlers. He'd grow to be bigger, stronger, faster, and he would go on to become the greatest Asian footballer to have ever lived. What's up guys, I'm the Football Show, and in today's video, we're gonna dive into the career of Park Ji Sung. We're gonna start by looking at his childhood in South Korea and the beginning of his pro career in Japan. Then we're gonna check out his time at PSV, Manchester United, QPR, and how he did with the South Korean national team. And you're gonna wanna watch the entire video because we're gonna discuss in more detail Park's unusual and disgusting diet as a kid. Yes, he really did drink frog juice and deer blood and ate antlers. So without further ado, Kada. Park Ji Sung was born February 25th, 1981 in the South Korea capital Seoul and grew up south of the city in Suwon. Park started playing football while he was in elementary school where he impressed his peers with his dribbling and passing skills. He was so good that his name started to spread across the country as a youngster with lots of talent and lots of potential. Now, as Park got older, his small size and frailness deterred lots of clubs from signing him. So his father would travel six hours across the country to go Huang to get his son frogs so he could whip up this crazy concoction right here. Are you drinking that right there? Would you ever drink that? And not just one time, but day after day. And what's crazy is that Park's disgusting diet didn't end there. He also ate antlers and drank deer blood. Park spoke on Korean TV back in 2011, and this is what he had to say about his diet. It smelled like intestines, as if deadly and undrinkable. If it was good for my body, I ate a lot. I'd sometimes throw up after eating, but still I ate what I was given. I wanted to be good at football and my desire was greater than my distaste at eating these foods. Would you drink frog juice and deer blood and eat antlers? Me personally, probably not. But Part was committed to being a pro footballer and would do whatever it took to make it happen. Even if that meant eating and drinking some repulsive things. Park went to Suwon Technical High School where he helped his high school team to a national championship and he started to put on more size and strength. The lethal combination of frog juice, antlers, and deer blood started activating. But after high school, Park failed to sign a professional contract as clubs still thought he was too small and too weak. So he ended up joining the football team of Yongji University and Park's big break would come soon after. Yongji's team got to train with the South Korea Olympic team. Park had an excellent performance and out of nowhere, he made the Olympic squad. He was so impressive that less than a year after that, he made his debut for South Korea at the age of 19. Now, Park was still a member of Yongji University's team, but shortly after his unexpected but dazzling performance for the South Korea national team, the Japanese side of Kyoto Sanga FC offered Park a professional contract and he took it. And in 2000, Park packed his things and made the trip over the Sea of Japan and arrived in Kyoto. Park joined Kyoto Sanga halfway through the 1999-2000 season. Unfortunately, that season they were relegated to the second division, but no worries, because the next season Park played a pivotal role as Kyoto Sanga won the league and gained promotion back to the top flight. And in his third season with Kyoto Sanga, he helped them win the Emperor's Cup for the first and only time in their history. In the final, Park had a goal and an assist as Kyoto Sanga beat Katsuma Antlers 2-1. He made 80 appearances and scored 13 goals for Kyoto Sanga, but in 2003, he decided it was time to test himself in Europe. So he followed then South Korean manager Gus Hiddink to the Netherlands, where he signed with PSV. Now, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and down in the comments, let me know what's the most disgusting food that you've ever ate. We know Park had a crazy diet as a kid, and for me, the worst food I've ever ate is tofu. Hands down, the most disgusting thing. I will never, ever have that again. So down in the comments, let me know what's the most disgusting food that you've ever ate. And if this video gets 10,000 views, then I will try some more tofu. 
10,000, that's what I'm saying. 10,000 views and I'll try more tofu. Now let's get back into the video. Park would make 92 appearances for PSV, scoring 17 goals and tallying 11 assists. And in his three seasons in Eidenhoven, he won two Eredivisie titles and one KNBB Cup. But it was the 2004-2005 season that Park really put his name on the map. He was a standout performer for PSV as he showcased his incredible skills and never-ending stamina, notching 11 goals and 7 assists in all comps, mostly from the right wing position. And that season, he helped PSV to the Champions League semifinals, which is the farthest that the club has made it in the competition since they won it all back in 1988. Park's season was so good that he was nominated for UEFA Best Forward of the Year with the likes of Ron Dingho, Shevchenko, and Eto. And after this marvelous season with PSV, Park decided to test his talents in the Premier League as he signed for Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United. Park joined Man United in July 2005 at the age of 24, and he would make his Premier League debut on August 13, 2005 in a 2-0 win over Everton. Park's first season in Manchester would be his best statistically, making 33 Premier League appearances and scoring 3 goals and getting 9 assists. United finished second in the league that season, but Park would win his first trophy with the club as they went on to win the EFL Cup. Now, Park's career at United was kind of start stop start stop because he got this injury bug that he just never really could shake nonetheless he still had some very memorable moments with the red devils like in 2008 when he helped united win the champions league trophy united beat fellow english side chelsea 6-5 on pens park played the full 90 minutes in both legs of the quarterfinals and the semifinals but he wasn't picked in the squad for the final. And it was a weird one because Park was known as a big game player. Regardless, he still played a huge part for United on their run and is the only Asian player to ever win the Champions League. Also that season, Park captured his first Premier League title as United won the league. Then in 2009, Park scored the opening goal for United in their Champions League semi-final versus Arsenal. It wasn't a clean goal, it was scrappy, but it went in and it set the tone for the rest of the game and helped United advance to their second straight Champions League final. Another big goal for Park came in the 2011 Champions League when he scored a late winner versus Chelsea in the quarterfinals that sealed their fate in the semi. And in 2012, he made his 200th appearance for Manchester United. Now while at United, Park became known for his incredible endurance and seemed to cover every blade of grass on the pitch. And because of his tireless running and relentless style of play, he got the nickname three lung park while park was at united they had to face ac milan a couple times in the champions league and park was assigned the task of marking the midfield maestro andrea pirlo and this is what the italian legend had to say about park man marking on one of the many occasions when our paths crossed during my time at milan he ferguson unleashed park jison to shadow me the midfielder must have been the first nuclear powered south korean in history in the sense that he rushed about the pitch at a speed of an electron. Park's motor just never seemed to stop. It was like he was a battery that never need recharging. Between just me and you, it could have been that frog juice that his dad had him drinking when he was a kid, right? I mean, possible. Now, Park mostly played right wing for United, but he could also play multiple positions on the front line, including left wing, right mid, left mid, and attacking mid. Now, Park wasn't a selfish player. He didn't care about personal accolades. He only cared about the team and the team's success. He would do whatever the team needed. If that meant running 20 miles on the pitch that game, he would. If that meant man marking a player the whole game, he would. Park did the dirty work that nobody wanted to do. It didn't get a lot of attention, but it was vital to Manchester United's success. And this is what Sir Alex Ferguson had to say about Park. The great thing about Jisung Park is he's one of the best professionals we've had here. He is truly fantastic. In the end, Park would play seven seasons in Manchester, making 205 appearances and scoring 28 goals and tallying 30 assists. He won a quartet of Premier League titles in 2007, 8, 9, and 11, three EFL Cups, and the Champions League title in 2008. However, in the 2011-12 season, he saw very little playing time and decided it was time to continue his career elsewhere, and so he signed with fellow Premier League club, Queen's Park Rangers. Fitting, no? Park Ji-sung, 
Queens Park Rangers. Okay, yeah. It's not, it's not a good one, okay. Moving on quickly. So in 2012, Park would head down to West London where he would begin his new chapter that turned out to be very short. Park was named club captain upon his arrival at QPR, but things just didn't click between the two. In the first half of the season, he dealt with a knee injury, and then in the second half of the season, he just couldn't find his form. Park would only make 25 appearances for QPR, scoring zero goals and tallying just four assists. QPR would finish dead last in the Premier League that season and be relegated. And since QPR wasn't going to be playing in the Premier League next season, Park decided to return to the Netherlands and he would re-sign with PSV on loan for the 2013-14 season. Sadly though, Park would only play one season with PSV as that reoccurring knee injury would end his career. He did have a solid season recording two goals and five assists and 23 year to busy appearances as PSV finished fourth. But shortly after the season ended, Park at the age of 33 announced his retirement from football. And this is what he had to say on. I have no regrets about my career. I do think about what might have been if I hadn't been injured, but I have no feelings of disappointment or sorrow as I leave the sport. So that's Park Ji Sung's entire club career. From him going to Japan to joining PSV to his seven trophy laden seasons at Manchester United, time with QPR and his second stint with PSV. Now, let's see how he fared with the South Korea national team. Park Ji Sung made his debut for the South Korea national team in April 2000 versus Laos at the age of 19. He would go on to make exactly 100 appearances for the Tigers of Asia, netting 13 goals and tallying 9 assists. The highlight of his international career would be South Korea's third place finish at the 2002 World Cup which they hosted with Japan. Park had the winning goal versus Portugal in the last group stage match to send them through to the knockouts. This is the moment that Park announced himself to the world, and from there on, he would be a South Korean legend. South Korea would then go on to beat Italy in extra time and Spain in pens on their way to the semifinals, and it's the farthest that any Asian team has made it at a World Cup. In the Asian Cup, Park helped South Korea to two semifinals in 2007 and 2011, but both times being eliminated on penalties. Park wasn't able to win any trophies while representing his country, but the impact he had on South Korean football and Asian football in general is immeasurable. Now, Park Ji Sung was a player that flew under the radar because he was the guy that was doing all the dirty work. The guy that doesn't get all the media attention, but is crucial in order for a team to be successful. Now, a guy that didn't fly under the radar was Alessandro Del Piero, the Juventus legend who dazzled fans with his dribbling ability and his goal scoring prowess. He is Mr. Juventus, played over 19 seasons in Turin and made over 700 appearances for the club. Now, to learn more about Del Piero's career with Juve, check out the video on screen right here. But I'm the Footballisto. I appreciate you guys watching this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. I'm out. Peace.